But I'm excited for today. I am excited. At least Good. guaranteed no hangovers tomorrow. That's pretty nice. Joel, you can do your hangover report. I guarantee no hangover. What if we all wake up with splitting headaches tomorrow? Hey, it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> we'll see how, how sugary this stuff is. It's not. It's not at all. What? I did some I did some Googling. Not only is it no alcohol, but it's actually a low sugar. It's about twenty what? grams of sugar for a twelve ounce pour. So for a one glass grams. of wine. Yeah. Yeah. And so for, for twelve for, ounces. For like your for a normal for twelve ounces. So for a five ounce pour, you're looking at nine or ten uh grams of sugar. And for a comparison, a tablespoon of ketchup has six grams of sugar. So this is actually, okay. I, I think I read on their website, this is like 33% of your average uh, sugar intake in a, in a, in a re, compared to your normal uh, oh. reason. Hey, look at this too. We got potassium and calcium in here. This is good for our bones. Yeah. Thank wow. kind of God, based on previous conversations. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> You're know, cracking out old cracky <laughs> bones. That's right. That's right. You're going to be a ghost just floating through the house. No one's going to know you were there. I'm a ghost. <laughs> Welcome to Stop Wasting Your Wine, a wine review podcast where we waste our wine so you don't have to. On this episode, we review a white wine from New Zealand, Hey everyone, welcome back. Aaron here at the Stop Wasting Your Wine headquarters. So excited to hang out with y'all. I am joined once again by two of the pluckiest guys I know, Joel and Colin. How are you guys? Plucky. Yeah, plucky. Plucky. Pl- plucky meaning what exactly? Plucky. Is that is that good? I don't know. Just that word like popped into my head earlier and I was plucky. like, yeah, you're plucky. I think that's like, uh, you know, resilient and energetic and oh. just, you know. I pictured a duck. I don't know why. Maybe because it, it rhymes with plucky, but I saw a duck. I don't know why that's where my head went. I'm not real. I'm still not really sure what to think about this. Yeah, I mean, I'll take it. I'll take either way. I'll take the duck one. I gotta ask, when did did we agree that your garage in New Jersey was going to become Stop Wasting Your Wine headquarters? Because I did not sign off on that. Well, I'm in my basement. Uh, I should be in my oh, garage. Okay, my that's garage fine. is probably flooding right now. <gasps> oh no, no, no! Yeah, I don't know. You got the, the, there's a storm that. Should be snow, but, you know, global warming. So we're just getting, like, six inches of rain in, like, January. So that's fun. We got some rain over here, too, man. It was it was wild for a little bit. Yeah, it was. Ooh. It was hurricane outside for a bit. We're kind of used to it down here, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's whatever. We're pros. Not not all the hurricane parties in your life anymore, I imagine. I'm sure you're not, like, tossing the kids in the minivan and heading to the hurricane party. They're very different these days. Very different. Invol- involves 7 o'clock bedtimes and crying from the kids, of course. Well, that's, that's every <laughs> and, night. Uh, and me too. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. I guess it's not much of a party. When there's a hurricane <laughs> in your house, the hurricanes outside of it have less of an impact on your day. That's right. Wine helps. Wine, Wine helps, I'm helps. sure. <gasps> T-shirt. Wine helps. Yeah, Wine helps. It's just... Oh, that's fun. That's a cute idea. <laughs> Write it down. Stopwastingwine.com slash merch. Still going to make that a thing. <laughs> Coming at you in 2020 soon? Did you say two? Two. I said soon. Oh, 2020 oh. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I also thought you said 2022. I was like, oh yeah, boy, it's it non-alcoholic wine's got Aaron ripping. Yes, it does. If Aaron, how many hundreds of interactions with the hashtag Stop Wasting Your Winos did we have this week? Ooh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. gotta double check that, Joel. Joel, there were zero. Zero people oh. wrote hashtag stop wasting your winos. Okay. Not one. Maybe it's because wino is kind of a derogatory term to refer to yourself as, and people don't want to like name themselves as a wino, but zero people did. So let's just keep relaunching zero. that. Maybe it'll work. That is a little bit under my projections for this week. Um, so we'll have to. <laughs> We'll have to really pick that up next week. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the update. Now, all you have to do, Joel, is actually engage with our Instagram over the next few days, and maybe you can get people to do it. Maybe if the people yeah. see the elusive Joel Ladniski uh-huh. trying to like rally them in the comment sections, yeah, 
Let okay. me know if you need help finding our Instagram. I might. Uh, though I know you haven't been there in a while. I might need help finding Instagram on my phone. So if you can come over and help me find that, and then we'll take it from there. That would be a good place to start. Take a left at Facebook. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> no, I actually, I know it now about because of this and because of the the great work you're doing on there, Aaron, building that community out there. So I am, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I've caught up to it pretty quickly. All right, everyone. So we have a great episode for you today. Joel, tell us a little bit about today's wine. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so today we are drinking the Geisen Riesling from New Zealand. And yes, this is a 0% or to be more accurate, a less than 0.5% alcohol wine. So considered a non-alcoholic wine or a de-alcoholized wine that we picked up for $12.99. Joel, why you why why have you done this to us, Joel? Why <laughs> in our, you know, we get together once a week yeah. and we see each other from 1200 miles away uh-huh. and you ha- you have us drinking non-alcoholic wine. Yeah. I why, know. Joel? Why? I'm really sorry, guys. But no, you know, honestly, I figured it's January. A lot of people out there maybe enjoying a, a dry January to uh, start 2024. And wanted to just kind of get in there and, and see if we could find something that might be a good place to start. Or really even, you know, some folks might not be aware that there's such a thing as de-alcoholized wine. So kind of just wanted to introduce that to to our listeners as well. So, I mean, I know when my wife was pregnant, we got into some of these two. We were searching and searching for a wine that might somehow a little bit hold up to the real deal. So, you know, even that just is a little bit of a, a fun adventure to try to find something. So whatever your reason might be to want to enjoy a uh, de-alcoholized 0% alcohol wine, I just thought it was something that we should acknowledge and and uh, bring into the podcast. No, you know, I, and I appreciate that. I'm one of those folks who who are trying to do a dryish January, and I had fully prepared to have a couple cheat nights with you all. So you know, this is nice. I'm not I'm not breaking my trend, and even from like a whole thirty stand you know standpoint, like there's still a little cheating here because of the sugar. But even even that, like this is actually a pretty low sugar. Uh, I think, you know, it's about like nine grams of sugar per five ounce pour, which is, you know, uh, uh, it's not awful. It's not, it's, it's, that's, that's a very small amount of sugar. So yeah, this is, you know, for all intents and purposes, like a not only non-alcoholic and, and you said, uh, you know, de-alcoholized, which is yes, something yes. I'm completely unfamiliar with, but yeah, it's not just Same. like non-alcoholic, but also like a relatively healthy, low sugar beverage choice. Yeah, something that kind of shocked me about the world of non-alcoholic wines when we did start kind of trying to look around in there and explore it was that there are some producers that really do it with a similar amount of love and attention to detail as other winemakers and really want to provide a really nice product at the end of the day. So, you know, it's not just it's not just the Welch's grapefruit out there, right? There's people trying to spend time figuring out a way to bring a, a de-alcoholized wine to the masses that's enjoyable. Yeah, and I don't I don't have a ton of preconceived notions about this because I've never really had one before, so I'm not sure really what to expect, but what I at least hope from it is that we see some characteristic of the variety Riesling. You know, I, I don't expect it to taste exactly the same, obviously, because you are changing the process at the end of the day. And we're actually going to learn a little bit about the process of oh. making this type of wine in the learning segment. So stick around for that. So, you know, I, I hope we get some of those Riesling characteristics. I'm just hoping that uh-huh. at a 0% wine, we can at least enjoy it as a Riesling and not just like, oh, this is just de-alcoholized wine. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, and look, and look I, I've never tried non-alcoholic wine before. You know, I've never tried like non-alcoholic beer before in my, br- I, you know, when Joel pitched this to us a couple of weeks ago, I was like, oh man, really? Are we going to do this to ourselves? <laughs> like this, this is good. Like, I don't want to drink a juice box at like nine uh-huh. o'clock at night. What are we doing? But I'm, I am optimistic about this. Like I've done some reading about it. I, you know, the, and also just like side note, like maybe this is a small thing. The bottle's really nice. Like it's, right? like, it's a nice looking yeah. bottle. It's like. Good looking company. Their website is very cool. Yeah. So I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful like this could be a legitimate thing for someone to grab if they have a social event 
Which, you know, that's the biggest pressure in January, right? Like, you're trying to dry January, but you don't want to become a Still want to hang out. Uh, and, food. like, you still want to hang out. If this is something that you can, like, grab and, and at least go through the social motions of having a drink in your hand while also, totally. you know, helping yourself stay a little healthier uh, in the darkest month of the year. <laughs> 100%. And I'll tell you this right now. If it's awful, I'll buy you both a drink next time I see you, okay? An alcoholic drink. An alcoholic drink. <laughs> okay. Just, yes. I, I want to make sure that was locked in. I'm, I'm on to you, buddy. You got me. <laughs> All right. Excellent. So we talked a little bit about uh, this de-alcoholization word. Colin, can we can we learn a little something? This is the only thing you will learn. All right. So, yeah. So, like I mentioned, today we're going to talk a little bit about how they actually make non-alcoholic wine. And this version of non-alcoholic wine anyway, because as Joel mentioned, the, the grape juicier type of wine that's basically just like sparkling grape juice. And this is a little bit different than that. And I was totally unfamiliar with the, the style. I think we, we might have talked about this, but like, Aaron, what what do you think when you hear zero alcohol or non-alcoholic wine? I mean, I assume that the wine is created to be non-alcoholic. Like there's some aspect of it that they change the process where there's no fermentation, that they just create a product that is supposed to simulate the taste of wine it is how I've always assumed it's supposed to be. Yep. That I felt the same way about that. Like it, it's wine product, not so much actual wine. Joel, did you have something to add there? Yeah. No, I mean, it's what you guys are saying, but I, I always just attribute it to something. It's just going to be really sweet. You know, there's not going to yeah. be much you know going on and it's sure. just going to be sweet, grapey juice. So I was interested to learn doing some research about this, that there's a segment of this style of wine where the producers are actually making wine and then taking the alcohol out of it. So they're actually, and I think Joel might have touched on this too, but they're actually putting some thought and care into the wine before they take the alcohol out, which I had no idea. So that's pretty cool. So a product like this begins just like a a regular bottle of wine where they, they pick wine grapes and then they bring them in they actually ferment this wine and then they go through a process of actually taking the alcohol out this sounds very mad scientist to me this sounds <laughs> ridiculous it's just like we're gonna make a wine normally we're gonna go through this whole process and then we're gonna take the alcohol out yeah, of it that's right it's like that doesn't make no, sense. no i thought the same thing but they actually the the industry has put a lot of work into figuring this out. So there are three main ways of taking the alcohol out of the wine, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, the first one is vacuum distillation. And basically the, the alcohol is separated from the rest of the wine based on boiling points. So they basically just boil the alcohol out. There's reverse osmosis where they're basically sending the wine through special membranes filters. And that takes the different particles out based on particle size. And then they have what's called the spinning cone column. And this is actually how this wine is made, where they use, it says centrifugal force, which I'm not an engineer, so I don't know too much about centrifugal force. So apparently they just spin the hell out of the wine to separate the components. I do that too after <laughs> enough drinks, but like. Yeah, it's it's like the ultimate swirl before you taste it, right? It's just a machine <laughs> that's just spinning the hell. You spin so much that it actually separates the wine into different components. But this method is supposed to keep kind of that varietal characteristic because it's a lot more gentle on those flavor compounds so the one issue with this method of course anytime you mess with a product you might take too much stuff out and when you take alcohol out if you think about the, the structural components of a wine alcohol is very important when it comes to body so usually before you have a finished product after it comes out of de-alcoholization it's very thin so they do oftentimes add unfermented grape juice back into the wine to give it a little bit more body it usually has sugar in it, which also helps with body. So you, the, most of the body that we're going to experience in this wine, if there is any, is going to come from that unfermented grape juice as an after add. It, it's definitely an interesting process, an interesting product, and I'm I'm excited to, to try it and, and see what it's all about. So you said that they can heat it up and vacuum the alcohol off. They can use reverse osmosis or they can spin it real fast into three different parts and then take out the alcohol. Yeah, those are the three, <laughs> shockingly, yes, those are the three ways you can de-alcoholize a wine. Well, I, I am just, I, I am just shocked. I, I am shocked and and startled and excited. 
Joel, how you feeling? This is your wine. I feel good, man. I feel good. Yeah, it's something that you said, Colin. That's kind of interesting. Is you know, you kind of harp, not harp, but you kind of mentioned how there's a lot of people that are really looking into how we can do this better. And it sounds like there's three really interesting ways that that dealcoholizing wine is done. But it's just, I'm not super surprised. I don't know if you guys have seen this too, but I feel like just the non-alcohol sections of cocktail menus and all of that have been growing recently like it's a it's a big growing market and i think it's really smart too of you know these wine producers who are trying to get a foothold in this early on because i only think it's going to grow and i have to imagine these came from a strong desire to just do it better because i feel like non-alcoholic wine had such a bad reputation for so long because it was just like that wine product. We're trying to produce something that seems like wine. And there had, there had to be this aspect of like, there, there has to be a better way because I say like our generation, generation under us, like millennials, Gen Z, like there is a stronger desire to have a, you know, a, a social drink that is non-alcoholic. And I would say I was, pr- that's probably a much greater desire and much bigger market than existed before us where, I feel like there'd probably be a lot of public shaming to walk into. People people would make assumptions about why you're asking for a non-alcoholic. Like, just to name it, like, if you went, went into a bar and asked for a non-alcoholic beverage uh, in the generation above us, there would, there would probably be an assumption that you are, you know, on the wagon. Versus people now that are just trying to maybe be a little bit healthier, maybe just enjoy the flavor, maybe just want to, like, temper their drinking. It's just way more social. Cool. So... We've hyped it up a lot. We've talked about it. We know how the hell they made it, which is new and exciting. I really hope it's good now after all of that. So let's let's uh, stick our nose in there and see what we're dealing with. Tastes like wine. All right, gentlemen. So let's try this out. Joel, would you do us the honors since this is your wine? What are you getting on the nose? I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie to you, but yes, I will. Okay. So, I mean, it smells, it smells like wine. That's a good start. It's a good start. I mean, there's definitely something a little different. You can tell it's going to be a little bit different, which is to be expected, but still I'm getting a little, little citrusy in there, little lemon. And eh, that might be kind of the biggest thing that I'm getting. And maybe the only thing (laughs) How about you guys. Yeah, I'm getting some overarching smell that I actually can't really identify. Colin, do you know what that is? It it almost feels like a take on tennis balls, right? Am I wrong about that? And we're back to the tennis balls, ladies okay. and gentlemen. We we had a Riesling from Germany, and now we're at a Riesling from New Zealand, and we have tennis balls. Colin, say more about that. Yeah, so I, I mean, you're right. I don't really know what that smell is either. It's very strange. I don't know. I know. I know. We drew kind of a, a tiny line between tennis balls and the petrol scents last time that we were talking about it. You could maybe convince me that there's a little bit of that petroliness going on in here. I'm not getting the tennis ball. That's why I mentioned a take on tennis balls. So I don't think it's exactly tennis balls, but I think it's in mm-hmm. that same mm-hmm. family of the petroly kind of rubbery. Yeah smell and i will say this it's not a bad smell it's not an offensive smell by any means i'm not hargening back to our carmen from a couple weeks ago that like made me want to throw my glass out the window but it's like it's it's like this mystery smell it's like this unknown it's not like a common at this point in our in our wine journey you, you start to get to the point where you're like oh this i remember this smell from this or this smells like this and you start to get that pattern mm-hmm. of aromas and this is new i don't get a ton much else than that it's really I really only get kind of that weird, funky, petroly smell, and then oh, just a little bit of citrus, like Joel mentioned. Maybe, maybe a tiny bit of grapefruit along with that. I'll tell you, I, I am just, I wasn't sure if we were going to be getting much at all when we were doing uh, this bar. So I'm happy that we're yeah. able to yeah. dissect a couple of things from this. So, so far, optimistic. I, I, I'm not too concerned that we're not getting a lot yeah. on the nose with this. It's a That's definitely surprise. not the point. I, I don't think of yeah. having this uh, substitute. Yeah, it's a little bit some. Let's see how it tastes because that's what we're here for. Will this act as an, a decent substitute for a glass of wine when you're out and about? Colin, I'm looking at your face. It's very thoughtful. I'm just seeing like the rubric, you know, going through your brain. What are you thinking? So the acidity of Riesling is there. It's surprisingly acidic. It really just it attacks the taste buds. 
and then you definitely get that petrol, and then it kind of tastes like vitamins to me after that. I'm getting a lot of, almost like the chewable, chalky vitamins you used to take as a kid. You know, Ooh, like I love those. The Flintstone vitamins. <laughs> and the Flintstones. Yeah, yeah Flintstone vitamins. And, oh my God, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, so like the citrusy, the yeah. lemon version of that is is really the what I'm getting from this wine. Hold on, I'm, I'm going down a core memory rabbit hole. I'll be back in a minute. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Thank you. That was, yeah. Which, you know, also kind of makes sense if you think about the process that you explained. There's like that adding of the grape juice back in to kind of recover the lost alcohol. I imagine it's, I imagine similarly, like when you have Flintstone vitamins, you add a grape flavoring to it. You add that kind of aspect. But I get what you're saying there. I'll say, I don't, I don't dislike it. I'm, all, I'm also, and I'm also, I'm putting this within the framework of what this is. Yes. You know, if, if this Which was I an think alcoholic. we all have to do. Yes. Right. Sure. And I think that's yes. important because what we're trying to do is identify something that is passable. And again, this was 12 bucks, 13 bucks. So it's not something that's going to like, oh my God, I invested in this. But like, is this a wine that you could grab and have a, a decent, <laughs> you know, you're not going to be upset that you're holding it in your hand. So I'm, I'm trying to put that in my uh, um, brain as I'm, as I'm tasting it. Yeah, I would say that you can tell there's sugar in here. There's no doubt about that. This is not a dry wine. This is definitely an off dry wine. You get a little bit of that sweetness, which kind of balances the acid, which is actually kind of nice because the acid is so searing. And then there is actually quite a bit of weight. And I think that's all contributed to the the sugar in the wine because with no alcohol, there's a surprising amount of body. Yeah. Honestly, I'll tell you one of the reasons I didn't really mention this before too, but one of the reasons that when I was choosing the wine for today, I went with the Riesling was because I think our favorite collectively, our favorite white wine that we've had so far on this show was that Dom de Cant Werner Riesling. It was amazing. I think mm-hmm. it, it blew us all away. It was very unexpected. So I was like, oh, well, if that's the case. Let me try their, their Riesling. They do have some other varietals as well. But I thought, let's go to that. And then it was like a day or two later that I realized that it was a Riesling Trocken. As you taught us, Colin, that's the the dry Riesling. Yep. And I was like, oh boy, this is going to be, this is not going to be good. Kind of forgot about that aspect. This is going to be that sweet. We even talked in that episode about how we a lot of people equate Riesling with really, really sweet. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. But you're totally right. I mean, the I was shocked that it's not just sweet to the face here. There's, mm-hmm. it's like they, they wanted to make sure that's not the avenue that they were going down. So there is... A, they're both pretty loud to me, but there is some sort of a balance here of that acid and and some sweet and some sweet. You know, like you said, it's it's not it's not totally dry, but it's it's balanced, which yeah. is nice. Yeah, but, uh, sugar is the natural balancer to acidity. When you have a sweet wine, if you need a ton of acid, or it's just going to feel cloying. So I think they did a pretty good job with the acidity to sugar balance here. I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah, and you definitely feel it after a few sips. Like it has that kind of like creamy mouth feel. It's like on my teeth. Mm-hmm. It's almost like that citrusy. If you like sucked on a lemon for a second, kind of have that remaining yeah. feeling on your on your gums and teeth afterwards. Yeah, like it, it's surprising. Like what's there for a you know a wine with no a wine with no alcohol. All right. So with that being said, and again, like for the listener, we are putting this kind of in a, in a different lens in the realm of non-alcoholic wines. Do we like it? Yeah, but did they like it? It's time for the review. So before we rank this wine, I do think we need to we need to take a moment because we need to acknowledge that there's a little bit different of a of a ranking here when it comes to non-alcoholic wines to NA wines. So if you're a, a longtime listener of this show. You know kind of the layout of our room, right? We've got our, our coveted wine fridge in the corner where we put our, our favorite wines that we come across. Colin and I have two in there. Aaron, you have one right now as of this recording. Of course, we have our, our kitchen table. This is where we keep out some wines that we are really excited about. We want to share it with our friends. We really enjoyed these. We have our closet where you know it's wines that uh, we may not have loved, but they're they're pretty good and we want to keep in there for a rainy day. And then, of course, we've got our sink where, unfortunately, some of our wines have ended up as we pour them down the drain. R.I.P. So in honor of our first, yes, absolutely, in honor of our our first N.A. wine review, and keeping in mind that uh, we intend to maybe do some of these down the road a little bit, but that we're we're really, you know, at the end of the day, we want to answer that question of, is this a, a good bottle of N.A. wine that you should try? 
or is this not so great? We probably aren't going to find all that much variation in between, you know, in between every one that we try. Maybe we will, and maybe we'll adjust down the road. That's kind of what we're thinking right now. So I want to introduce a new piece of furniture uh -huh. to our stop wasting your wine room, and that is the N.A. shelf. Oh, very nice. So the question we will ask ourselves, gentlemen, in this episode and any future episodes we do with an N.A. wine is, does this wine belong on the N.A. shelf or does it belong down the drain? Because no, any, any good host, right? We have we now have an alternative place for alternative beverages for folks who are not, you know, drinking alcoholic beverages at this time. So great. This is more about is this something that we would put out for folks or is this something that, that would just be a bummer for people to pour this for themselves and be like, what are you what are you giving to me here? So okay. So in that in that framework and that thinking, and thank you, Joel, I'm assuming it's a high quality shelf. You know, thank you for volunteering to come over and hang them up for us. Colin, how are you feeling about this one? Is it going on the NA show? Or is it going down the drain? It's tough because it's I don't really like it. I don't think it's very good. It just, it doesn't really remind me of Riesling. It's, in my opinion, is is more grape juice than wine, but I think I'm going to put it down the drain because I just don't think it tastes very good, to be honest. Like, if that's, at the end of the day, what I have to go off of, I just don't like the way it tastes. It's not terribly out of balance. The sugar isn't too bad. It's not too sweet, but it just doesn't taste very good, in my opinion. So, I'm putting it down the drain. Wow. Joel, how are you feeling? Yeah, I uh, I am putting this on my N.A. shelf. I truly was impressed with the fact that it was not just sweet to the face. And maybe my bar is really low for this, but I think I'm lowering it intentionally for right now because this is our first introduction to NA wines. I was pleasantly surprised by it. So for now, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I don't think that, uh, of course, comparing it to you know, an actual Riesling traditional wines, um, it pales in comparison, but I think there's some expectation of that to some extent. And I think somebody drinking this, you may not go, oh my God, this is my new favorite thing, but you're not going to be disgusted by it or, 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 you know, have an unpleasant experience really. I think in my opinion, you'll be like, oh, that's an interesting thing or you'll, you'll enjoy it to some extent and that'll kind of be it. So for that reason, I'm putting this on my NA shelf and feel pretty darn proud about it. I'm I'm with Joe on this one from the, from the standpoint of knowing that most non-alcoholic wines are going to have that juice, grape juice flavor. The fact that this company has tried really hard to kind of keep the wine making process alive and remove the alcohol in post, I don't know how much closer we're going to get. And just from like an enjoyability standpoint, my bottle's been sitting out for a little bit. I've been pouring a few glasses. I have drank half. I have drank half this bottle and I feel great, guys. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but, <laughs> right? you know, if I imagine if this was like chilled for a bit and it was at a party and someone wanted a glass of non-alcoholic wine and this is what was available to them, they would not be upset by it and they wouldn't feel like they're, they're drinking like yeah. an IC or something like that. There is enough of the wine structure there, like we talked about, to, to make it passable. And if passability is the entry point to the NA shelf, that's the uh, key. That is what this yeah. is. Passable. <laughs> Passable-ish. Passable-ish. And who knows? And I and I actually <laughs> think I think at the price point, and we'll get into the whether or not it's a, it's a waste in just a second. I, I think this is something that we can maybe do. A little more often because I'm not mad that I threw 12 bucks at this. I don't, I'm not mad that there's a non-alcoholic bottle of wine just kind of sitting around my house. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it after today, but like I would be, I would be okay with trying <laughs> a, a few more of these to to at least get an understanding of where things lie on the spectrum of you know suck to good because I don't have that understanding right now. Joel and Aaron are putting on their shelves. Is this a waste of your wine? I will say that if this was. A dollar seventy-five more, I would say yes, but it's just at the top of the range where I'm going to say no. This is not a waste of your wine. Again, in the context of you're looking for an NA wine, I just I just think it's gross. So I'd have to say it's a waste because I just don't think it tastes. It tastes like vitamins, citrus vitamins, and a little bit of petrol. If you guys are enjoying it more, I love that. But I would you have love to that for us. Love that for you guys. Yeah, I do. I really do. <laughs> um, but for me, it's a waste. I just don't like the way it tastes. It's just, it's not a, a very good drink. Well, look, this is providing me with 4% of my daily potassium and 4% of my right. daily calcium. 
So this is the healthiest episode yeah. of Stop Wasting Your Wine that we have ever recorded. Um, and so very much like Joel said, I was a little bummed out of the fact that I was going to use a cheat night because it's still a cheat night because there's sugar on a non-alcoholic wine until I saw that this was going to be twelve ninety nine, And I think at the, the price point of grabbing this for like 13 bucks to put a, you know, nice looking bottle with, the, with a Riesling from a, you know, New Zealand estate that's really thought about how they're doing this. I don't, I don't think it's a waste for that specific purpose. But again, like Joel said, if they were trying to, to pitch this thing for like 17 bucks, then I would, I would say, you know, just go get a, go get a high seat people like go get an ecto cooler and move forward. Hey, you know what? You mentioned to Aaron that it's one of the healthiest wines we've had, which I do. I'm I'm enjoying that. I do have one concern though, because usually when we're doing these recordings, we're like a quarter of a bottle, maybe a half a bottle in, and um, we might be a little bit funnier. So I really hope that this is uh, a really good episode, and that uh, that's not our secret sauce. So. Yeah, our humor is as dry as this wine today. <laughs> Oh, wow. Very Brutal. good. So, you know, begrudgingly not a waste of your <laughs> wine, very specifically if you're looking for uh, an NA to just have around uh, as you, you suffer through January. Next week when we are back, we will not be drinking uh, non-alcoholic wine, so we're just going to move right past that. Um, until then, <laughs> uh, we'd love to engage with you as much as possible on social media. Reach out, ask what's going on, and Joel... Can you tell the folks yeah. how they can do that? You got it. Hey, stop wasting your winos. Let me tell you how you guys can get a hold of us and hang out with us. Hey, check us out on Instagram uh, at Stop Wasting Your Wine. We are still on the Facebooks as well. Come hang out there. StopWastingYourWine.com, where you can see everything that we've reviewed, including this wine. Go back and see who thought different things were a waste and uh, who thought they were not. Really good stuff out there. So. Those are the big ways. And then just uh, thanks for listening. Keep listening. Uh, uh, give us some reviews on whatever platform you're listening to the podcast on. And if you want to hear something, you want us to try a wine that you've got in mind or something like that, give us a shout. All right. Thanks, everyone. We will catch you next week. Bye, y'all. And remember, stop wasting. Bye. Bye.